morning and welcome back to the Strong Sisters YouTube channel. In today's exciting video, we are making a trip to our local dairy farmer to pick up some raw dairy so that we can make some fun dairy creations in the next couple of weeks. We'll also just be chatting about our thoughts on dairy. Oh, I want to show you. Guys, 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 motto oh. for today, okay? On my boobies. On the boobies. Mommy, less problems. It's a motto. If you like this shirt, link in the description <laughs> below. All right, let's get going. Hello, popping in here to share something that I just shared on Instagram stories. If you are not following us there, we are at strong.sistas, but I want to share it with you guys too, so... ...is what do ladies' voices actually sound like? So this is my actual voice. Sometimes we just like change it up based on the personality that we're feeling in that moment or based on like what the what is speaking to us and that's just us. That's just what we do. We've always been that way. So because of this, we have received comments in the past that you ladies will never be taken seriously if you don't just speak normally. Stop with the voices. You need to tone it down. And my response to that is I am not trying to be some professional authority figure. I am sh out here to share my message and my truth and my experience and that is all that I care about. And if I don't live up to your standards of professionalism, you don't have to listen to me. That's completely fine. And so this got me thinking because a while ago, like many months ago, the first time we ever posted about regenerative agriculture, we didn't really know all too much about the topic. Like we didn't, we weren't 100% confident that regenerative agriculture has so many great benefits, but we posted it anyway because it seemed interesting to us and we were gonna look into it more. And somebody in our real life decided to comment back this whole argument about, you ladies, you do not know enough. You are not farmers. You will never know. There's nothing wrong with conventional beef, nothing wrong with the environment. There's no difference in the two of how the animals are treated you need to stay in your lane and so this really got me thinking that like when I first received that comment I was like oh gosh like I felt really uncomfortable because of course somebody's questioning me and I didn't know everything to argue back at the time but I am not going to shy away from posting something that I care about and that I'm passionate about just because somebody else is gonna question me or because I'm not air quote a professional on the topic no, I am not an acting farmer yet. I will not be a professional on the topic, probably ever, but definitely not until I have years of experience myself. That doesn't mean I'm going to shy away from sharing about it because it's important to me. Because I'm not a professional. Sorry to break it to you, but there's an entire generation of people sharing their experiences, which are very powerful. That is how things change. That is a grassroots movement. We as carnivore as a whole are a grassroots movement because people are sharing their experiences. Nobody is necessarily an expert on carnivore. That doesn't mean you shouldn't share about it. So my point of telling you this is I really hope that if in the instance that anybody ever questions your lifestyle, your choices, your health, your nutrition, what you're doing for yourself, do not shy away from sharing about it more just because you're not a professional. Speak your truth, share your experiences. It is very powerful. That's all you can do. So that's just like my little motivation for you today. There I go, changing my voice again. <sighs> People, you will never please everybody. You just won't. You just have to be yourself. So anyway, we just got home from getting our steps and I dropped Ashley off for the lab. She's getting some professional leg -like work done. I'm gonna start packing up our stuff and then we'll head to the dairy farm after we eat a quick meal number one. So let's get going. Very quick platter one before hitting the roads, the staples. Chuck steak, egg yolks, one coddled egg and then some raw beef suet over there. And then some of this beautiful duck wiggly bone broth. We do like to eat our broth cold to keep this consistency but we will heat it up on occasion to get a little variety. Variety is the spice of life. Let us eat, yo. So we are on the road headed to the local dairy farm, but we have some exciting news. So you guys will notice that starting today, we will no longer be posting our uh, workouts in our daily vlogs. Instead, we're going to separate our carnivore vlog topics with our training videos, and the training videos will instead be housed in a private Facebook group called Strong Sisters Training. So this training group will serve as like an accountability support group. You'll basically be working one-on-one -on -one with us where you'll be able to post your progress, ask questions, ask form questions, etc. So it will cost $15 a month to join this Strong Sisters Training group, but you'll basically be getting one-on-one -on -one personal training 
in an accountability and support group so that we can all move closer to our goals. That breaks down to $3.75 a week. So a link to request to join the Facebook group is in the description below and we will add you guys to the group. We're really excited about this. Come help us grow and form this community, be the pilots in this fun new movement that we're doing. We think that it'll be much better use of our time and help you guys. And that way, anyone who isn't interested in training won't have to skip through those in our daily vlogs. Plus, in this group, we'll have at-home variations of all of the Strong Sisters lifts to accommodate for those who do not have access to a gym. Super fun, super cool. It's gonna be bumping, ton of fun. But now we just pulled up to the local dairy farm, and so let's see what type of dairy they got. in the farm store and the first time I came across a store like this which is Scouts Honor was back in Michigan over the past summer where you could go and pick out the meats you wanted the eggs and the milk and then you write down what you got and then you either pay that day just in their little jar or they'll invoice you within the month and that is exactly what we have here so nobody is working in their little farm store which I think is awesome I love that trust that's being built the relationship between the customer and the farmer is awesome. So yeah. let's see what they've got in store for us here. It's decorated so cutely with all the little mason jar crafts and they sell lots of random products so like soaps. Go milk soap. Lots of cool things. Okay, so what do they have in All the right, fridge? So in the fridge, they've got, we came here for the raw cow's milk, so that's what we're gonna get. So it's $4 for each glass jar. They also sell goat milk, raw goat milk, chicken eggs, and duck eggs. But we are here for the cow's oh, milk, too. which you can see, which we're gonna get both of these. You can already see the cream separation. So the cream is already up here. That's awesome. what we wanted though, because we are making butter. That's how you know that it's raw milk. Well, that's not good for making butter. Non, not we, homogenized. We need the cream for our yeah, butter, so this, perfect. So grab both of those. This is some good quality, not homogenized milk. And then over here, they have a lovely freezer of their high quality. It seems like they have pork and beef. They got some snack sticks. Honestly, this is just beautiful. Like, you, I could live in this for a month or two or three. Okay. Oh yeah. So then you just come over here and you write down what you get. Um, and so it's like Scouts Honor, but always make sure to bring cash with you. The first time that we came here, we forgot cash. So this place is kind of in the middle of nowhere. So we had to drive back 15 minutes to a Walgreens to get <laughs> cash back and then come back. That was to bring a cash big, you. big fail. But that was awesome. That's so easy. I love it. Yeah. So like she said, this place is pretty much in the middle of nowhere, but I don't want you to be swayed away from going and finding these local places because you're unfamiliar with these experiences. Like she said, again, the first time we came here, we had no cash and we looked like suburban idiots. <laughs> but that's okay, it was a lot of fun. And even if you are intimidated of meeting new people or reaching out to like go visit somebody's farm, they totally want you to come do that. That's why they have this place set up this way to encourage people to come get their products. So I prefer coming to here as opposed to just like a generic grocery store, not having any idea of where that product came from. You come here and you're like, wow, that was grown right here. You can see the animals Absolutely. that they pulled yes. the milk from. Bottled on our farm. It would be nice if it was still that price, but it's 2020. places like this. I love building connections between customer and farmer. I think that is so 
essential. So now we are going to drive back home and get on with our day. We did not film it. We of course posted a selfie on our Instagram story because selfie with your local farmer. We just met Anna who is one of the leaders at the Hoffman's Little Acres where we just visited and she was so sweet. She said we can come back next time and bottle feed one of the calves. Welcome to the Midwest where it is fields and fields of monocrop corn or soybeans. While this is quite ugly at appearance, it has the potential to be fields and fields of green. Let's throw some ruminants, some goats, some pigs on there. Get that green growth, soil regenerating, remineralizing. So here we have stumbled across a Tyson feedlot. Not sure if this is cattle or pigs. Very small space, probably a ton of animals combined in here. Sarah, how many animals do you think are in here? I'm thinking like a thousand, oh. and I don't know if they have access to grass. I don't know. I cannot tell. I, Tyson. It's, it's sad. It really is sad. And Tyson is like a huge distributor to things like Walmart and other grocery stores. So You can begin to understand why people have an issue with the beef production yes. in the country. But that's why regenerative agriculture is so important. Regenerative agriculture is the exact opposite of this. So on the topic of dairy, a lot of people ask us whether dairy is appropriate for carnivore. Can you consume dairy? Absolutely. Dairy ultimately comes from an animal, so therefore it is totally appropriate for carnivore. But we would encourage you guys to try to source from raw dairy sources for a few reasons. And we will get into this in a completely separate video of why raw dairy. But I would say the two main reasons are one, it has more nutrients. And two, you're supporting local farmers who are doing a lot for your community, doing a lot for the environment. Whereas a lot of these larger organic brands that you see at the grocery stores are actually kind of like feedlot operations, which there are a ton of cows packed into small spaces. They're not fed a species appropriate diet necessarily. The term organic is a little loose. We will go into that in a separate video. So we suggest trying to source raw milk. So we suggest trying to source raw milk or raw dairy. So there's raw milk that comes directly from the cow and has not been chemically altered at all and contains full fat. Then there's pasteurization, which essentially heats the milk up to a certain temperature to kill off bacteria. And this is to enable a longer shelf life. And then there's the step called homogenization, where the milk is pushed through like a small, small holes in order to break up the fat globules. And this is mainly for aesthetic purposes so that you don't get that cream separation. So that cream separation that we saw in the dairy farm that we just went to, that does not happen after homogenization. The milk stays the same color for aesthetic reasons. And it turns out that 80% of the organic milk that is sold in grocery stores is both pasteurized and homogenized. And this is ultimately chemically altering the milk. And even though most of this milk is stored in the fridge, it turns out that you actually don't, it doesn't have to be refrigerated until it's open, which is a little bit creepy, no? So if you were interested in trying to find your local farmer to source some raw milk or raw dairy, there are a few, three options. So one, you can use this real milk finder, www.realmilk.com. There's also another resource at eatwild.com. We'll include that link right here. And then you can also chap you can also contact your local Weston A. Price chapter leader to see if he know if he or she knows of any raw local dairy in your area. But if you do find a local dairy farmer, we suggest asking a few questions, inquire about their practices to just ensure that it is a good quality safe so that the, a good quality source so that the milk and the products themselves are safe. So one possible question is do you test your milk? So do you test for bad bacteria in your milk? Ideally the answer is yes. But do know that this is a very expensive thing to do so not all small local farmers can afford that. Two, how do you feed your cows? Are they 100% grass fed and finished? Do you feed them grain at some point? Ideally it's 100% grass fed and finished but in super cold areas they may have to feed grain for some small period of the year. Three, how many cows per acre do you have? Ideally this number is as small as possible because then the animals are living a less stressful life. Four, do your lactating animals have access to pasture? And this is super important so that they have a species appropriate diet and that the milk will have the nutrients that you are looking for. Five, how 
do you store and transport your dairy products? So ideally, as soon as the milk is pulled from the cow, it's refrigerated and kept in glass containers. And six, ask your farmer, how do you deal with sick cows? Do you feed them hormones, artificial hormones? Do you feed them antibiotics? Or do you pull them from the herd? So hopefully you guys can find your local raw dairy farmer. Now that we have some raw milk, we'll share with you guys some creative ways to use it. We're super excited to make some raw butter tomorrow and look forward to a future video where I will sit down and talk a lot about raw milk. I got really deep into the raw milk rabbit hole about why I think it's super important and I think that it is better to consume raw milk over the, pros the ultimately chemically altered and processed dairy products. Hi mama, Nelly. Nelly's very excited guys. Nelly says that she wants you, come here Nelly, to behave like an angel. She is the ultimate angel baby. So we just arrived home at our parents' house and it is a beautiful winter wonderland out there. But look who is here, mama. Hey. Say hello, something smells good, what you making? Keto chicken parmesan. Keto chicken parmesan, but we are still gonna keep the campaign, hashtag Carolyn Carnivore 2020. <laughs> How's that sound, mama? I'm working on it. Okay, let's go check out the keto chicken parmesan. First off, adorable old crock pot. Yes. Okay. Let's, see. let's move around in yeah, here. Yeah, let's move around. My, this smells really good. It smells so good. I chicken boobies. I need to go get some Making this for our dead day. Chicken boobies. We'll get them carnivore one day. And then here are our parents' dogs and why we can't bring Marshy and Gus with us too. So we've got Nelly. And then Bailey. Bailey. Wants Bailey. Bailey. She's a cream golden retriever. And then little Sambo. Little Sambo. Little Sam, Sam, come back, Sam. <gasps> Hi, little man. No, oh, he's a little Westy, a tiny little Westy. We're gonna check out for this video to spend some time with Mama and Papa and doing her farm chores. Farm chores. Yes, we'll show you guys all the animals tomorrow. So until the next video, Mommy, tell them what they need to do. You got this. You got this. Remember earrings. How do we end it? Act like a angel. Act like an angel. <laughs> Act like an angel. <laughs> Behave like an angel.